Uh, today I'm going to talk about a very complex uh, entity. Uh, actually, it's simple and complex, it's, which is called uh, arachnoid cyst, spinal arachnoid cyst, or meningeal cyst. Here's a history. Patient's 26-year-old woman uh, coming with chronic back pain. Her back pain had been presented for about two years. She had pain both in the lumbar and upper thoracic region, very uh, positional. Pain has also been radiating down the shoulders at times. Her pain has been severe at times and uh, have episode of chest pain and also enough severe pain that she have difficulty moving due to pain. In addition, she reported numbness and tingling both in the upper extremities distally and in the legs. These symptoms have been present over time. On review of the uh, system, she reported headache. Uh, she has past medical history of uh, depression, irritable bowel syndrome, and uh, Crohn's disease and fibromyalgia. Uh, here is a fixed examination, imaging examination. This, by the way, this report is from the neurosurgeon's uh, second opinion to verify the first neurosurgeon's opinion before they can proceed with surgery. So anyway, this is uh, they reviewed. They think the, there is a presence of an arachnoid cyst in the upper thoracic spine. And I'll show you the picture later. And there's no Chiari one malformation. Uh, here's the rest of the history. I concur with she has the evidence of an arachnosis in the upper spine. Um, you can rewind back and look at this uh, later. Basically, that's a history. In uh, September 28, 2009, this is patient's MRI. Um, the uh, survey view of the MRI showed there's something uh, different this part of in this part of the dorsal aspect of the uh, CSF space <laughs> as compared to the rest, and uh, as if there's something compressing on the cord. Here's a T1 picture. Basically, CSF dense uh, CSF signal appear like something compressing on the cord. Here's a normal CSF flow artifact, and then at the area of the core being compressed, like there's an egg-shaped area that's almost like a, a, another cord is, uh, that is comp appear to compress on the cord. And then this structure went away and back to normal CSF flow around the cord. Uh, one l the transition is uh, at uh, C7-T1 level. Here's a C7 level normal and T1 now is being compressed. Uh, it's hard to tell where is the end of this uh, arachnoid cyst. Does it end with, uh, let's see, this is T1. Does it end with T4 level? It's hard to tell where the caudal end of this uh, arachnoid cyst. Patient was called back to do a CSF flow study that you can see the um, the CSF flow is more synchronous. The rest in the rest of the CSF space, anterior and posterior to the cord, except this area in the upper thoracic region dorsally, it is not synchronous with the rest of the uh, spinal fluid flow. There is something uh, wrong in this region. Hard to tell. The upper part probably here, and the lower part. Uh, Maybe here, it's hard to tell. Again, this is another view of the CSF flow uh, study. Here you see the mass effect compressing on the cord. And then resolved here, something pressing on the cord, but really there's no tumor or no soft tissue in there. And then myself, I did a uh, myelogram study of the uh, uh, thoracic spine, trying to find out, is there a membrane? Is there something that's blocking it? So I did the uh, myelogram, inject the contrast. Patients had a CT scan, lie on the back, and uh, this is the result. Uh, there, again, there's some, like something compressing on it, uh, but the density of, this, of the contrast looks similar both in front and posterior to the cord. So it's kind of very disappointing to find out where's the edge. And then I did not quit. I, I just 
give it a try and put the patient in prone position face down. Now I see this uh, arachnoid membrane much better. You can see clearly the density of the um, contrast is denser in the posterior to the cord. And uh, you can see an interface between the uh, arachnoid membrane and uh, the rest of the CSF. Axial view can also tell them apart. Let me just window it so here's normal. By the way, it's face down. I'll, I'll, this is dorsal to the cord. It's hard to tell where the caudal end of this arachnoid membrane, but I can tell here's a transition. Now I'm flipping this. Uh, picture up, uh, vertically and you can see normal CSF not that dense seem like there is a more dense uh, contrast seem like uh, more of the concentrated uh, thecal contrast is in collected uh, blocked by this uh, membrane that prevented from moving higher up n uh, smoothly So that is appear to cause a compression on the cord, and uh, it's hard to tell the caudal extent. All the nerve roots are just uh, normal, uh, displayed laterally, but uh, mm. they are there. There's no disruption. After this study, the I just showed you the report. Uh, neurosurgeon uh, are agreeing there's a arachnoidosis, and may or may not be symptomatic from it. But patient wanted to proceed with surgery. Uh, during the surgery, this is the result. Uh, I just get this part of the uh, surgical uh, um, history out. We brought, we brought an intraoperative ultrasound machine and localized the arachnoid cyst. The cephalad edge is at T1 level, where CSF flow is clearly blocked by a parachute-like membrane behind the cord. The cord was uh, deviated eventually due to the posterior arachnoid cyst. The caudal edge was around T4, where the cyst seem to taper off, so it's not very clear. And then they did the, um, they opened up the dura, the thickened arachnoid was immediately th noted. We then found the cephalic edge of the parachute and removed this in a, a piece. Um, and then they fenestrate the rest of the uh, cystic wall. So this is the uh, intraoperative ultrasound. This is some gel here. This is a dura before they open it up. This is a cord. I think this is cranial. This is caudal. Uh, this is the, uh, the arachnoid cyst blocked by this parachute-like membrane uh, that's causing the arachnoid cyst compressing on the cord. This is actual view. This is the axial view. This is the gel that uh, after the bone was removed here, and um, this is a gel, this is a dura, this is the parachute membrane, this is a normal flowing CSF around the cord, this, uh, this parachute blocking the CSF flow normally in this region. So this is uh, another view of the, the, f the little membrane that's floating in the middle of the CSF flow that looks like a little flap right here. The speed is, is of course, is, I, I'm controlling it. Let's see, let me see, what's a normal speed? And here's a normal speed. The uh, spinal cord being compressed by this flapping crescentic shaped uh, arachnoid cyst. That's why this part of the uh, CSF doesn't flow synchronously with the rest of the CSF. Another view. Flow here. This is the parachute membrane. This is a regular CSF. This is the trapped CSF. Yes, here it is. Membrane flapping around. Uh, patient keep having complaint uh, of back pain. This is immediate post-op. Maybe. Uh, uh, four days after the surgery, there's some fluid collection in the uh, epidural space in the post surgical bed, uh, narrowing the CSF and the mild compressing on the cord. 
and then there's some uh, post-surgical bed fluid. Here's cord, here's normal CSF, and then being compressed uh, by this maybe seroma, which resolved two months later. This is two months later. Uh, that uh, post-surgical bed fluid is a, a lot less, and there's not much compression of the cord. And you can see the CSF flow around the uh, uh, spinal cord is more uniform, and there's no trapping of an ovoid-shaped uh, uh, structure anymore. This is post-op. This is pre-op. Post-op pre-op. So there's slightly less uh, compression on the cord and more space uh, for the cord to move it towards the back. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure how much patient got better. Uh, now, it's eight years later, the patient still come in inter intermittently for a complaint of back pain. Here's the anatomy. There is a dura, which is the uh, the thick one that's cut half cut away, and there is a, 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 a rectal membrane in between its potential space called subdural space. So this is a rectal membrane. This is dura. We're talking about a extra membrane that's uh, formed either within the within the split of the arachnoid membrane or. A duplication of this portion of the membrane that's trapping the fluid between the cord and the native arachnoid membrane. Again, we are talking about this is arachnoid membrane, this is subdural space, which, which is potential space, which shouldn't be there. And then we're talking about the, the um, entrapment is between the arachnoid membrane and the cord. There's a whole bunch of uh, PO vessels. I remember the um, uh, operative report said they have to clotterize one of the uh, penetrating uh, vessels to stop bleeding. This is the literature uh, description of uh, arachnoid cyst. Another name is called meningeal cyst. Uh, basically, it's a intraspinal uh, and extramedullary cyst. They could be extradural, that is uh, not even connected to the CSF fluid, or it could be intradural and then could have mass effect on the spinal cord. The cystic wall may be imperceptible uh, and no enhancement. The cap sign, the extradural cyst, outlined by rostral and caudal epidural fat. In the literature, for example, this one shown that the differential amount of contrast within the thecal sac due to partial filling of the posterior intradural meningeal cyst. For this case, the contrast tend not to fill this part of the cyst, versus our case is more favor to fill this part of the cyst, especially in prone view. Those patients tend to have pain because why? Because I see this catheter, which is beclofane uh, pain medication delivery catheter, show a normal contrast amount. This picture show the cyst. It's hard look like there's an edge. In oh, our case, I, I see many other cases, it's just one edge, half. They functionally equivalent to a cyst. They're pressing on something, but there's only one half, the blockage, because of the pumping of CSF and make it behave like a cyst, even though there may not be a lower edge of the cyst. They can be dorsally like this case with CSF flow, or other part, uh, Eventually, it happened as well. Let me see. Eventually, this is the, in the ventral aspect. And this is a myelography. This part is a normal filling of uh, CSF within the thecal sac. Here, the uh, the black, the white lining are the filling defect, which is a nerve root. This part of the structure is partially filled. This pooling of contrast separate from the intrathecal subarachnoid compartment is the uh, meningeal cyst and slash arachnoid cyst. This cyst can be chronic and they can make bony remodeling. And those cysts can be an extra dural meningeal cyst. 
they are extra dura. See, this is dura. They compress on the dura instead of expanding it. Some other pictures, they are really dilated and then causing bony remodeling. This case shown that there is a compression fracture of L4, which could, considering the, uh, the spine is flexing and this part of the bone being squashed, and then there may be some injury to the uh, dorsal arachnoid uh, membrane, and then a post-traumatic dural tear. They say dural tear. I'm not sure it's probably there are some arachnoid membrane tear as well. The arachnoid herniation that caused uh, caused the CSF to follow. This is arachnoid herniation through the dural tear in an intradural arachnoid cyst, which is uh, the curved picture. So basically, from here, follow my f my finger around here. This this. Uh, a lenticular shaped region. This is the uh, arachnoid cyst from trauma. I guess there's other trauma that we don't remember uh, or from uh, a surgery or a lumbar puncture. They can f uh, form as well. In this case we just catch it uh, with a fracture there. The reason I want to emphasize uh, on the previous case is this kind of situation frequently arise. This patient is a 60-year, 50-year-old, 57-year-old patient uh, with a CT monogram and showed a little filling defect in the dorsal aspect. Could that be a tumor? Could that be something else? Uh, we just didn't see it entirely. You can see that partially here. Uh, now we can see it. Could that be an arachnoid cyst or could that be a tumor? And the result is that probably another arachnoid cyst. This one doesn't have that much compression uh, from mass effect. Uh, CSF flow, which is okay. There's no trapping of, uh, of CSF like, I'm sorry, there, there's a trapping here. Look like, look at the egg, press on another egg. Maybe that is the uh, the filling defect that we've seen on on CT. This is what level? Let me see. This is at T3 level on the MRI. And the lower one, behold, uh, this is at T3 level on CT as well. So that's another case of a uh, arachnoid cyst. Uh, just by diagnosing the arachnoid cyst, that's not means the surgery going to be very successful. Remember the previous patient, uh, eight years later, still have pain, uh, but uh, it's, fr it's pretty f frequently seen.